Hey, Dan Coach Miller here with NorCal Sports Network with a video and a tribute to the great Clay Thompson, who will be playing the Golden State Warriors on Tuesday night. This is going to be an epic return. Clay Thompson, a fan favorite and an all time great with the Golden State Warriors and an all time great NBA player. Let's get right into it. Before we do, this video is sponsored by Chapman Law Group. Chapman Law Group, check out them in the description of this video. We want to thank Chapman Law Group for being a proud sponsor of NorCal Sports Network. So give Chapman Law Group a call if you have any legal needs. All right, Clay Thompson, as mentioned, an all time great warrior, will be visiting. San Francisco's Chase Center on Tuesday night to face his former club that drafted him, the Golden State Warriors. And guys, I'll just say this. Clay has been an absolute monster of a player. The guy fits the definition of a true warrior. This is the guy that played through many injuries before his big injuries, even in the playoff series that happened in, I believe it was 2017, Clay got a high ankle sprain. And that high ankle sprain normally would keep guys out minimum of two weeks, but closer to four. Clay didn't miss a beat, continued to play on it. Uh, I can remember him get, getting a concussion in the playoffs, and he comes back. I think that was even in the finals, got a concussion. Didn't miss a game, maybe missed one. I'm not sure, but he came right back. The dude was just an all out true definition of a warrior. And <clears throat> Clay is going to be welcomed back with open arms. The Warriors are going to do a great video tribute, and they're passing out captain hats to everybody that comes to the ball game in attendance. Clay was just, he's a folk hero. And anybody who, is down on Clay Thompson, doesn't know the real Clay Thompson. I'll just say this about Clay. You know, it's devastating that he got hurt. And I, guys, you need to check out in the athletic Anthony Slater's great article that he put out on November 11th, Monday the 11th. Go check out Anthony Slater's article. In fact, I'm going to pull up pieces of the article to quote here. And uh, this is just a fantastic article. And, you know, one of the things that stood out to me was Clay, Steve Kerr talks about Clay was going into his like age 29 season. He was at the peak of his career, right in smack middle of his prime. And Clay Thompson gets the ACL injury on the attempted dunk with the Warriors up 83 to 80 in game five against Toronto in the 2019 NBA finals as the Warriors were going for a three-peat. Remember, they had already lost KD earlier in the series to the Achilles rupture, and then Clay ends up getting hurt. The Warriors were definitely three-peated, if not for those injuries. And I think the Warriors could have even won it without KD because Clay was smoking. He was so hot in game five. He had like 28, 29 points, and he was just hitting up threes, and, and he was unbelievable. He, uh, he had like 10 points in the first 10 minutes of a frantic third quarter, uh, the article says right here. And then he went soaring up through the dunk to punctuate a nuclear personal run. That's when Raptors wing Danny Green met him at the top with a physical contest, knocking Thompson off balance and forever altering his career. As Joe Lacob says, one moment, one nanosecond can change everything. And it really did. It altered the Warriors. It changed Clay's career. And um, this is a, I'm going to play a little bit of this injury just to remind you of this moment. 
with 2.22 to go in the third quarter with the Warriors up 83-80. Clay Thompson, this place was rocking at Oracle. And anybody that says, by the way, that Chase is a better place than Oracle, it may be appearance-wise, but it's nothing was as loud as Oracle. Nothing. Listen to this and watch this. This was a rough moment in Warriors history, and it really did alter everything for Clay and the Warriors when this moment happened. And a four and a foul. And Thompson grants his left knee, now writhing in pain. Steph Curry slamming the ball on the court, so upset. Green went up to block it. Some of the players saying something. Danny Green saying, I'm just trying to block the play. No, that wasn't a dirty play by Danny Green. And everybody for the Warriors and the franchise in here in the stands holding their breath. Clay Thompson obviously in some pain. He grabbed that left knee right away. Mark, you talked about it earlier. One of his strengths is how durable he's been. The fact that he only missed the one game after straining the hamstring. He plays on a lot of nights other players wouldn't be out there. And I'm going to say this. They're going to be more wary of putting him back in. Oh, that knee right there. Just, you they saw see the awkward just, landing and right boom. away. After this Durant situation. Wow. Watch how he so obviously needs help lands up. on that Danny left Green's knee. Just trying to block that shot. That, there, oh. that, as you said, Jeff, is not a dirty play. And as soon as Thompson grabbed it, this is what Steph Curry was doing. And, Mike, if he leaves, he can't come back in. So if he doesn't shoot the free throws, he's out for the rest of the game. This was an amazing with Clay coming back to shoot the two free throws. The guy, as I said, is a true warrior. Steph knew it. Clay Thompson was headed back to the locker room, but then turned around and limped back out on the floor. And it's what Jeff, you said on a personal foul as Danny Green shows some sportsmanship there. And Thompson agrees there was nothing intentional. But if you're hurt on a play and it's not a flagrant foul and you can't shoot the free throws, you cannot return to the game. And I think they got the message to Clay Thompson as he was walking back to the locker room. Hey, if you want to come back in this game, you need to shoot these free throws. And if you're Steve Kerr, you substitute right now so that when you take a foul, as you see Clay in the back, he was walking to the locker room and then somebody yelled something. He turns around to shoot the free throws. Then you can take him out, obviously. And got the huge roar from the Oracle crowd. Very similar to the Boston experience of Paul Pierce when he came back onto the floor. But the difference is this guy didn't have to use the wrestling. Beautiful stroke, Clay. Look at this. Just perfect. And he hits the free throw. Maybe one of the most beautiful you shots can see, see him ever. dragging that right leg a little bit. Or the knee, excuse me. As he now has 29 points. And I'm not sure they're going to foul. It's a shame. I think they're signaling for. The prime of his career to go back and play zone to me i'm committing the foul but clay thompson looked like he could act, actually survive on the floor right now he's staying in the game and there's the foul cousins foul siakam 
Thompson did not want to come out. They didn't want that foul. And Cook will come in. Thompson walking slowly. Trying to run it. But, Mike, I love the idea of making sure he's right. Let's take him in the back and make sure he's right. And Just, that's exactly where he's going, Mark. You can't afford to make another mistake. All right, there you have it. That was the memory of Clay getting hurt. Very difficult to watch again as seeing um, Clay have to go through that. But I will tell you this. That injury had, and, and the article, if you look at the article, it goes on to talk about Clay did a lot of his rehab on his own and not under the direction of Warriors head trainer Rick Celebrini. And Clay says that was a mistake. He admitted it was a mistake. He was down playing some pickup basketball and he was about 10 pounds overweight. And he tore the Achilles, and that just pretty much derailed him. Clay would have probably come back to be pretty close to, to Clay had he not suffered the Achilles. Had he got the proper physical therapy and care under Rick Celebrini, he would have got the knee would have been probably fine. People recover from ACLs. But the fact that he didn't, it pretty much wiped out his career because he ended up missing two and a half years. He missed two and a half years. He missed the following season with the ACL, and then he missed a year and a half afterwards with the Achilles. Just a shame. I'll, go, I'll say this about Clay Thompson. Now that I've had time to look at this and look at his career, in fact, if I was to show you his stats, take a look at Clay Thompson right here, his stats as a player from 2012, 13. He, he started, uh, he averaged points per game. <clears throat> 16.6, .6, and then the next year, 18.4, and then 21.7, 22.1, 22.3. All of that before the injury, and then 20, and then 21.5. The man was a 20-plus-a-night scorer automatic, and <clears throat> his three-point percentage was over 40. He averaged... In fact, the year, he, he averaged 44% one year, two years before he ended up getting hurt. The guy was an unbelievable scorer, unbelievable defensive stalwart. He would always take the team's toughest player, and he was two-way clay. <clears throat> he was known for as two-way clay. And, you know, he kind of got... I think, you know, in the NBA's top 75, he ended up not making that. He was just outside of that. I think, you know, had Clay, I think he should have definitely been top 75. I'll say this. If Clay Thompson doesn't get injured on that play and he goes into his age 29 and 30 season and 31 and 32, he's now 34. I think Clay would be a would have been a top 50 all-time player. Without a doubt. That's my my take. Top 50 NBA all-time player had Clay not had the knee injury because the knee injury led to the Achilles. Clay you know, he'd still be at the top of his game. He'd be starting his decline, but Clay was special. He was special, guys. And if you don't believe me, go back and watch the highlights. Watch the 60-point game where he scored 37 or, you know, against uh, Indiana, 60 points 
in in less than three quarters. Go watch the 37 point third quarter. I think it was against Sacramento. All in Oakland. Go watch those games. Go just just watch Clay Thompson in the NBA Finals against or the NBA uh, Western Conference Finals against OKC in game 6, 42 points. The guy was electric. Yeah, some nights he'd have some off off night shooting. But nothing like he really had after he got the injury. Yeah, Clay forced it the last couple of years. Clay tried to recapture what he had before the injuries, and it was frustrating to him. He just wasn't the same player, and he had a hard time coming to grips with it. And the Warriors are better team this year with Buddy Hill than without. That you know they're better with Hill than they are with Thompson. But I will never knock Clay for just who he was. I mean, he was an ultimate competitor, like all great athletes. He was stubborn, and he believed. He could recapture what he had before because the stroke, the shot was was perfect. It, it's one of the purest shots, jump shots of any player in the history of the NBA. When the Warriors drafted him, Jerry West went down with Joe Lacob and they watched Clay in uh, Southern California work out before the draft. They watched him. They went down there in the first Five minutes, Jerry West said, that's the guy. And Lacob questioned him and said, wait, we've only been here a couple minutes. He said, no, that's the guy. That's the guy you want to draft. And, uh, you know, Lacob's son told uh, his dad when he was watching Clay play Stanford at a game at Stanford when Clay was at Washington State, told, told his dad, if you don't draft Clay Thompson, I'll never speak to you again. Well, Lacob bought the team in 2010. His first draft pick was Clay Thompson. So I wish I could be there Tuesday night at Chase, but I'll definitely be watching. It should be one of the greatest ovations. Warrior fans should not hold anything against Clay for you know, maybe some of Clay's saltiness the last year or two, the way things went down, the way he got benched last year. He wasn't playing in crunch time and and Pods was taking his spot. That was hard for Clay to take. No one should hold that against Clay. Everyone should be on their feet if you're a Warrior fan and give Clay the loudest ovation. He was a true Warrior. And I can't wait for the statue to go up outside of Chase of Clay Thompson. And I hope Clay Thompson can come to peace and grips with his career as a warrior and let go of any bitterness that's come down. I know the, you know, he felt like the contract that he signed after he suffered the ACL knee injury, that uh, he felt he earned it that five year extension before he got hurt and he did even though the Warriors only got two and a half years out of him look Clay helped bring the Warriors you know three titles before he got hurt and he still helped them win the fourth in 2022 Clay that shot is as pure it's one of the greatest shots and the greatest things in sports to watch is a Clay Thompson jump shot so, guys, thanks for watching this video. Comment below in the comments. Tell us what you think of Clay Thompson. Tell us what you think of this video. Give us some more ideas if you have other ideas for videos that we'll do. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to NorCal Sports Network. Thanks for watching this channel. We appreciate it. Take care.